Welcome back to Madman Review. In this video, I'll talk about what in my opinion are the top 5 best 380 ACP pistols for concealed carry self-defense. The 380 ACP deserves our attention in these dire times. If you've been living under a rock in the past decade, you've probably never heard of Lee Eye Defense before. They're an ammo manufacturing company, but they also design some of the most unique and innovative bullets on the market today. Two of their more recent offerings in particular have been shown by many to give the lowly 380 ACP the literal edge it needs to be an acceptable self-defense cartridge even when shot from barrel lengths shorter than 3 inches. These are the Extreme Defense and Extreme Penetrator. These are not hollow points, so they don't mushroom, but the hollow spaces or flutes on these bullets leave behind a wide and consistent spiral-shaped permanent wound cavity pushing the relatively weak ballistic capabilities of the 380 ACP to its absolute limits even when shot in a short sub-3 inch barrel. If there's one good reason to carry a handgun chambered in 380 ACP, it's because these fluted bullets now exist. Two other brands I'm aware of are Inceptor's ARX and Norma's NXD. These bullets make the 380 ACP shooting platform a viable alternative, good enough to replace the 9mm for concealed carry self-defense. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about my top 5 best 380 ACP pistols. Just as a quick reminder, if you're enjoying the content so far, hit the subscribe button and click on the little bell icon so you get notified whenever we have new content. Number 5. Sig P238 the SIG P238 is the most expensive out of all the handguns on my top 5 list with a starting MSRP of $650 and a street price of $550 to $580. It could partly be because SIG Sauer, as a firearms manufacturer brand, has soared in popularity since they won the XM17 Modular Handgun System Competition in 2017, becoming the supplier of the military's standard issue sidearm, the M17. It could also be because the SIG P238 is just so well built that it's also the handgun on the list with the fewest complaints posted online by owners. The SIG P238's barrel length is 2 and 7 tenths of an inch, which is average as far as micro-compact handguns in 380 ACP go. Its overall length from the tip of its beaver tail grip to the muzzle measures around 5 and 5 tenths of an inch, which makes it relatively longer than most of the handguns on our list. The height from the bottom of the magazine to the highest point on the slide measures 3 and 9 tenths of an inch. As far as dimensions, though it might be a bit longer than the others, you shouldn't have problems finding a holster for concealed carrying this handgun because 5 and 5 tenths of an inch overall length is still relatively small. The slide width is 1 and 1 tenth of an inch, making it a little thicker than the typical micro compact and 380 ACP. With the frame made out of aluminum, the P238 unloaded weighs in at roughly 15 and 2 tenths of an ounce. So, unlike most other 380 ACP pistols on the market today, it's got some heft to it. Of course, the heavier a firearm is, the more manageable the recoil. Granted, the 380 ACP is a low pressure round that doesn't have a lot of kick, but if you need something for the woman in your life and she has weak wrists, she might like the P238 more than any of the plastic 380 ACP handguns on the market. If you don't mind paying a little extra for such a well-made piece by a highly reputable manufacturer, the SIG P238 is hands down the best pistol chambered for 380 ACP. Number 4. Caltech P3AT as a direct contrast to the SIG P238, the Caltech P3AT is one of the most affordable 380 ACP handguns on the market today. It has an MSRP of $338, but you might be able to find great deals at your local gun store. The lowest reported street price I've seen on any Caltech P3AT to date is $220. As far as reliability, like most pistols chambered for 380 ACP, the most common complaint owners of this handgun have is it has feeding issues. For the majority, these issues seem to tie into the break-in period. The common fix is to shoot anywhere from 300 to 500 rounds of varying 380 ACP ammo and to contact Caltech customer support if the problem persists. Speaking of customer support, Caltech's customer support is reportedly one of the best in the industry, which means that if you purchased a new P3AT and it turned out to be a lemon, you shouldn't have issues getting it fixed. Just as a bit of a warning though, 
If you're buying a Caltech, I would recommend you buy one new. Because if you buy a used piece, Caltech's warranty is non-transferable and only applies to the original owner. As for its specs, just like the Sig P238, the Caltech P380's magazine can hold 6 rounds and its barrel also measures 2 and 7 tenths of an inch, but strangely, its overall length is only 5 and 2 tenths of an inch, around 3 tenths of an inch shorter than the Sig P238. Its height is 3 and 5 tenths of an inch, 4 tenths of an inch shorter than the Sig P238. As far as dimensions, the Caltech P380 is the second smallest pistol on this list. The P380 having a polymer frame with aluminum insert weighs 7 and 7 tenths of an ounce unloaded, which could be a good thing or a bad thing depending on your carrying and shooting preferences. It's the lightest on this list, which means you'll have a tougher time managing its recoil. But on the flip side, being lightweight, you can keep it holstered all day without you feeling sore. Number 3. Beretta Pico I like the Beretta Pico for two huge reasons. The first one being it's affordable. With an MSRP of only $300 and a street price of less than $250, it's the second cheapest handgun on my list. Cheap but not cheaply made, which is the second reason why I like it so much. As far as my research goes, it's one of only two 380 ACP handguns on the market today with a manual that states it's safe to shoot plus P rounds in it. The other being the Car CW380, which unfortunately didn't make the list. Now, I'm sure some of you would say there is no such thing as a 380 ACP plus P because there's currently no SAMI specification for any 380 ACP load that exceeds standard pressure load. And you would be right. Still, this didn't stop some ammo companies from coming up with unique 380 ACP overpressure offerings. Buffalo Bore and Underwood are two such companies. If you have a Beretta Pico and you'd like to try these plus P loads, you can. I know I would, but do be aware the manual gives a bit of a disclaimer saying continuously shooting these loads will shorten your handgun's lifespan. If there's one thing I don't like about the Beretta Pico, it's the heavy double action only trigger pull which measures around 10 pounds. Granted, for such a tiny pistol that will easily snag clothing when you have to draw it, you don't want too light of a trigger pull as you might end up with a bullet in you. But still, 10 pounds is a little too much. As far as dimensions, the Beretta Pico is just a tad bit smaller than the Sig P238 with a barrel length of 2 and 7 tenths of an inch, an overall length of only 5 and 1 tenth of an inch, and a height of 4 inches flat. It's also really thin, with a slide measuring only 725 thousandths of an inch. Number 2. Ruger LCP2 Announced 13 years ago, the original Ruger LCP in 380 ACP was Ruger's first entry in the ultralight defensive handguns market. In the next two years, two improved versions would be released, then in 2016, Ruger announced the LCP-2. Dimensions-wise, the LCP-2 is a bigger version of the first LCP, but it's still a micro handgun. Ruger made several changes to the original design as a direct response to feedback from potential customers, people who were going to buy the LCP but were deterred from doing so by some of its features. The new LCP-2 is now a little wider with the grip slightly thicker around the palm area, giving the operator better purchase on the handgun. The slide was also made a little bigger to make way for front serrations and taller sides. In addition, it now locks back when empty and the trigger now has a safety similar to Glocks. Speaking of the trigger, what's arguably the biggest improvement when comparing the original LCP and the LCP-2 is the latter's new trigger, which was changed from the heavy panic-resistant double-action-only trigger of the original to a single-action trigger that allows for some slack before it breaks cleanly at 5 pounds and 11 ounces and is followed by an actual reset that doesn't require the operator to extend it all the way out. So, why do I like the LCP-2? Two reasons. First, it's essentially an upgraded version of the original LCP, which is already a great microcompact in itself. And second, out of all the handguns on this list, it's got the best trigger pull. This is what happens when a company listens to their customers. Ruger has really outdone themselves with the LCP-2. I can't think of any reason why you wouldn't want to buy this handgun. 
Sure, there are a lot of owner complaints online concerning feeding and stove piping issues, but then the same is true of any other microcompact chambered in 380 ACP. And these issues usually go away after the break-in period, so no big deal. As for pricing, when the original LCP came out in 2013, it had an MSRP of $539. In comparison, the LCP2 only retails on Ruger's website for $349, and if you look around, you might find deals with the lower street price somewhere in the neighborhood of $280. <laughs> Number 1. Seacamp LWS 380 The Seacamp LWS 380 is the most unique out of all the handguns on my top 5 list, and it's not hard to see why. To say that it's small is an understatement. It is minuscule. With a barrel length of only 2 and 6 hundredths of an inch, an overall length of 4 and 25 hundredths of an inch, and a height of only 3 and 25 hundredths of an inch, the Seacamp LWS 380 is really tiny, yet it can keep up with the big boys with its magazine, which, just like the others, is able to hold 6 rounds. Outside of a few common feeding issues, reviews on this pistol are mostly excellent. And because it's made entirely out of stainless steel, the Seacamp LWS 380 has an unloaded weight of 10.5 ounces, good enough to handle the recoil of the 380 ACP in such a tiny package. Talking about pricing, for the engineering marvel that this handgun is, an MSRP of $595 is not bad, in my opinion. It only makes it the second most expensive handgun on my top 5 list. Unfortunately, as with all the other pistols we've talked about, it isn't without its downsides. The Seacamp LWS 380 has the heaviest trigger pull out of all the pistols on my top 5. Again, it's understandable. This thing doesn't require a holster because of its size, so you'll probably just put it in your pocket, and you wouldn't want an accidental discharge when its trigger snags clothing. But a trigger pull of 11.5 pounds could cost you your life too when it's time to pull that trigger on some psycho who's hell-bent on doing bad things to you because it can be difficult to manage that pull in such stressful situations, especially when you only have such a teensy-wincy grip to hold on to. Also, if you do manage to pull, it's anybody's guess if you could hit your intended target. The issue can be mitigated by spending more time in the range doing shooting drills, but I think C-Camp could have made the trigger pull just a little lighter. And that's all I have for you today. If you had a particular 380 ACP handgun model in mind that you feel should have made the list, let me know in the comments below. Hit like if you liked the content, and dislike if you disliked the content. Feel free to share and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.